Hi, this is Tracy HD with the weekly angelic message, and this is going to be a tarot and oracle message. I'm using a Divine Nature Oracle deck. If you'd like to purchase this amazing deck, please click the link down below in the description box, and it will allow you to purchase it right from Amazon. This deck has been spot on, so I am going to keep using it. It was spot on right out of the box. As I shuffle the deck, I'm asking all light beings, angels, and God, please relay the message I need to share with my viewers, the highest good of all. And remember, you could use this as a pick a card reading, one, two, or three, or a blended reading for the beginning, middle, and end of the week. The beginning of the week, I'll take the top card. Middle of the week, or card two, will be the center card. And the card number three or end of the week is going to be the bottom card. Okay, and let's see what we have here. Let me try to uh, stand these up a bit better. Okay, card number one or the beginning of the week. We have honor the ending. And I mean, look at how gorgeous this artwork is. I hope the camera's picking up on it because, like I said, this is an amazing deck. And if you'd like to purchase this deck, just click that link down in the description box below. I promise you, you will not be disappointed. I'm still awestruck by the entire deck and the, the meanings of these cards being spot on for me. And this card is telling us the Japanese word, akeru, means to pierce, to begin, to end. Uh, the ancient symbol from the Egyptians seems to be a perfect companion for this concept, concept as it was used as a sign of both beginnings and endings. Uh, over and over, we are reminded that endings contain beginnings inside them and the piercing of grief creates a sacred opening in our psyche where new life may pass true. Uh, we need to mourn our endings and give the heart the space to process the loss. But be careful not to read too closely to despair, for the ending carries new life inside it, and despair keeps us from seeing it clearly. So, I mean, when we have these endings, it's okay to sit for a while and embrace the feeling of the ending. But then what we need to do is we need to release it and let it go, because we don't want that to be a place where we live, okay? We don't want to sit in grief forever. Take the lesson that it taught you and move forward and leave the rest behind. It is so important. And then card number two or the middle of the week is Court the Divine Feminine. And this first one was card 38 for those of you following numerology. And this middle one is card number 35. And this card is saying that Many of us have only witnessed the feminine as a passive, pretty performer dressed up to please. Yet the divine feminine, as she lives in you, is equal parts of power and receptivity. She's a vessel of intuition, insight, and creative wisdom. Her receptivity to all of life keeps the balance of give and take nature intact. Let her guide you to openness, sensitivity, and deep knowing. Hers is the vision that allows you to conceive the most true and beautiful version of your life. She's inviting you to stop your endless doing, striving, and achieving long enough to sense what is possible and wise for you beyond your to-do list and obligation. So this is telling us to slow down. She's in a meditation pose. Some of you may need to meditate, okay, and embrace your inner feminine. And we're all made up of masculine and feminine parts. But I think a lot of us out there are just too, you know, logical sometimes, too businesslike, too overworked. And this is telling you to embrace your gentle side. And then card number three, or the end of the week, is a repeat card. We had this card, I believe, was it last week, either as a daily or was it in the weekly reading, but this is a familiar card. I noticed it as soon as I turned it over and it's beautiful. And again, she looks like she's sitting in meditation as well. Okay, so there seems to be a theme here of like sitting down and, and relaxing. And this card here is telling us uh, your energy, vision, and self-love are worthy of being protected. Many times we look for an outside source for that sense of protection. Uh, whether it be in a romantic partner, intimate friends, family. But 
This moment is asking you to treasure your own value and protect it with a golden bubble of protective energy. This isn't just about having boundaries and an ability to say no to what doesn't serve you. This moment is more about you holding space for source as it lives in you. You are the beloved embodied and deserve to be cherished. Cast the sacred circle around your body and soul. Imagine facing your current reality from within its loving, protective embrace. You get to choose what enters that sacred space and what must remain outside. And seriously, it's all about creating boundaries. Okay? And we have to have boundaries. Boundaries are not mean. Boundaries are because you love and respect yourself enough not to allow people to walk all over you. Okay? So you need to, you know, make sure that you're protecting yourself. Beautiful, beautiful reading this week. If you've enjoyed this reading, I would appreciate it if you would hit that like button down below. Uh, that will help my channel get more exposure here and get these messages out to people who need to see them. Share the video with those who may need to hear this message. And above all, subscribe because I will be back with more.